Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Sonos ZBM52C120W, the Switchman. It's it's their new Zigbee wall light switch, the 120W version for the US market. Let's take a look. Okay, let's see what we're working with. Got a little manual in the box and some screws and that's pretty much what else is in there. Let's take a look at the main unit itself. That looks pretty nice. It appears we have two live outputs and then the live and neutral in. I don't have my screwdriver on me, but I think you're just going to pry that there for the front to come off if you want to take the faceplate off, but I don't think there's any need to. Simply wire it into these terminals here to power it up. Let's give it a go and uh, see how it pairs and operates. All right, so I'm just gonna take off this nice little safety cover that they've got here. As you can see here, we've got the live and the neutral terminals. So I'm just gonna strip back a bit more of this cable that I've got here. Okay, we'll just give them the industry standard tug test. Make sure they're definitely not coming out. While we're testing it, make sure that we've got this safety cover on as well. So I don't accidentally touch those terminals once I've plugged it in. And before I plug it in, actually, let's open up Home Assistant and press permit join and see how quickly it comes up. So we're plugging it in. And there we are, new device. Okay, we should have the Sonoff switch man in my MQTT devices now. And there we have it. So we have a network indicator. Let's have a look at what that does. I imagine that there's going to be a very faint light on here somewhere that tells us whether it's connected, but I can't actually see that in my current lighting. If I can see that any more clearly later, I'll try and get a better video of it. And then we've got L1 and L2. There we go. We can see some lights here now, just about faintly when they're on and off. So if I turn off L1, that one goes off and L2 goes off. I have an extra little scroll through the options here because we've obviously got the two switches here Ah, and the network indicator, which I can now see. Okay, so the network indicator is on on L1 when the switch is on. It goes a slightly different color. So what else do we have? We have a couple of sensors. Okay, so this does appear to support detached relay mode somehow. I'm not entirely sure how we set that. We might need to pair it to a Sonoff bridge in order to set that, but we'll keep scrolling and see what other options there are. We've got the power on behavior. So I typically like most of my devices to restore to their previous state and just a link quality diagnostic sensor there. So this sensor here leads me to believe that it does have a detached relay mode. So you could, in theory, if we can set that, if I can figure out how to in a moment, we can make pressing the button not actually toggle the relay inside, which would be really useful for things like if you've got a smart bulb in the room. So you can press the button and whilst the bulb may actually be wired into the relay on here, it won't actually toggle the relay. And instead you can have an automation which controls the bulb. So it still behaves as though the switch is controlling the bulb, but it's not actually cutting power to it. So if we jump into Home Assistant here quickly, if I go into the Zigbee to MQTT interface and I find the switch and see the exposes tab, you can see that detached relay mode is a switch that you can enable here. Now, if you do this, there's a couple of things to know. You need to click the apply button down there below these two switches in order for your change to take effect. And another thing worth noting at the time of recording is that if you do enable detached relay mode, it's essentially currently just disabling the buttons so they don't do anything. Unfortunately, at this time, it doesn't send a button press action to Home Assistant when the button is toggled when detached reloaded mode is enabled. Thus, detaching it from the relay, but then not really doing anything. I have reached out to Sonoff about this and asked them if this is the expected behavior or whether they plan to do something more with this, whether it would do something when connected to one of their hubs. So I'm waiting for a response on that. And I've also suggested that actually it would be much more useful if when you enabled detached relay mode, if it unlocked button actions within Home Assistant that allowed for like double or 
single and long presses, which would allow even more powerful different automations for these button presses without toggling the relay. But for now, let's get it wired up in a proof of concept and see what we can do with it as it is. All right, here I am under my boy's bed with my proof of concept set up for this switch. Now, obviously, because it's a US height switch, none of the back boxes in my home are going to fit this. So my idea for a use case for this switch is to essentially use it in detached relay mode as a couple of buttons. I did have a couple of wireless Zigbee buttons in my boy's room, but unfortunately they managed to remove the battery compartment from the back of one of them, exposing the coin cell battery, which left me and my wife a little uneasy about them swallowing it or something. So we've taken those buttons out of here now, and I'm gonna replace it with this. I'm gonna maybe drill a hole somewhere under the bed, put a back box there, and then plug it in somewhat like I have and give them two new permanently wired buttons so I don't have to worry about batteries either running out or them swallowing them and attach it under here under their bed. So I've set up a couple of proof of concept automations to replace the existing buttons, which is nice and easy. I just changed the trigger over. And as you can see, this one here replaces the button that cycles through the effects under the bed here, which previous viewers may remember I initially had on a Zigbee button there. And I had a separate button, which was for getting mine and my wife's attention, which sends a notification to our phones and turns some of the lights around the house green which is what this one does. So as you can see, that's working absolutely great, super responsive. And even though I haven't actually got this in detached relay mode at the moment, I have sent feedback to Sonoff about making the button triggers trigger even when it is in detached relay mode, which unfortunately doesn't seem to work at the moment. So hopefully they will resolve that and potentially even unlock some double click and long press gestures, which will make these even more useful for this use case, because I haven't actually got anything wired into the relays here. I'm just using them for automations. So all in all, another fantastic addition to the Sonoff Zigbee lineup of products. I think this is another really good quality Zigbee product from Sonoff. If you're in the market for something that can control two separate lighting loads with a simple on off action, quickly, responsively, and from your smart home, then this might be the one to get, especially obviously if you're in the US market. If you'd like to buy one of these, the links will, as always, be on my website, homeiswherethesmartis.uk, and down in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel if you are. And remember, home is where the smart is.